At this time, I would like to introduce uh, your presenter for the day, Daniel Burke. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you so much. And uh, please, everybody, thank Sherry as well, who helps us to organize all these great trainings that we're able to host through SAC State. So today's training is the single audit report requirement. My name is Daniel Burke. I work for the Division of Local Assistance at Caltrans or the California Department of Transportation, if you don't like uh, acronyms. I work in the program reviews and outreach branch. The best way to get a hold of me is through my email address, which is posted up on your screens here. And the purpose of this training is to ensure that all of our agencies have the information to comply with federal and state requirements for the single audit report requirement. What are the single audit report requirements? The first question we need to ask ourselves is, is my agency subject to the single audit report requirement? And that answer is yes. If the total federal funds that your agency has expended is greater or equal to $750,000 in a fiscal year. So these federal funds comprise not only of Caltrans funds, but also other departments funds as well, or other federal agencies. This might include Cal, um, community development block grants, NF, CalFresh, excuse me, not CalFresh, um, you know, housing and urban development. So this not only includes Caltrans, but all the total federal funds. And again, it is for expended, meaning your agency has incurred 750,000, greater or equal to 750,000 in your fiscal year. Most of the agencies who report to Caltrans have a fiscal year end date or a fiscal year of July 1st through June 30th. So over that time frame, if your agency has expended greater or equal to $750,000, your agency will be subject to the single audit report requirement if you have expended that much in total federal funds. So let's say your fiscal year is July 1st through June 30th. And again, we estimate it's probably nine, between 90 and 95% of our agencies have that fiscal year. So if you're if you contact your Department of Finance, your accounting division, maybe it's your administrative services division, and you've determined that, hey, our agency has not expended greater or equal to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. And this might happen maybe in you know July or August once all the books are closed and tallied up. What you will need to do is well, you're exempt, so you'll need to produce on an agency letterhead, draft a letter that just states, my agency is exempt and identify the fiscal year. So if we're using the past fiscal year, which is 2020-2021, ended June 30th, 2021. So identify the exempt fiscal year as June 30th, 2021. And certify the exemption reason might be as simple as, hey, my agency did not expend greater or equal to $750,000 in total federal funds, and then have a authorizing signature sign the letter. That might be someone within your finance office, um, you know, such as a financial manager, maybe your CFO, your administrative uh, services division chief, and have them send that letter to the state controller's office. And the email is right there for you, single audits at sco.ca.gov. They need it as they are the state's repository for single audit reports, and also send a copy to the Caltrans Federal Fund Award at dot.ca.gov. As we are a pass-through agency, we need to monitor all those federal awards and determine if we need to perform follow-up based on the single audit report. But if you're exempt, of course, we won't have to, and that's how we are notified through the exemption letter. Let's talk a little bit more about if you need to complete the single audit report, what is included in that package? And up above, we have the federal regulation that guides what is required within this report. It's Title II of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 200.512C. 
So you need to have the the independent auditor, so that the independent CPA firm that you're going to hire to perform the single audit report. They have a, a letter which is called the single, which is called the independent auditor's report. You need to have financial statements and supplementary information. This might be something as simple as a cash flow statement a balance sheet which contains your assets and liabilities on there. We also need to have a report on internal control and compliance that's often coupled with the independent auditor's report. And again, is up to that certified public accountant or their firm's discretion on how they want to construct that. We'll need to have a schedule of expenditure of federal awards that show the federal expenditures that your agency had expended and make sure you have the correct catalog of federal domestic assistance the CPA firm that you hire may assist you with that. And we also need to see if there's any schedules of findings and question costs. Obviously, we'll have to, Caltrans and your federal awarding agencies may be interested in following up on some of these findings. And then we also want to see the corrective actions that are in there as well. You know, we want to see what steps did your agency take to mitigate the findings or are going to take to mitigate the findings. And how will that reduce your risk overall as an agency? And then also if there are any carryover prior, your findings should be included in that report. So we're subject to the single audit report. What are some of the due dates? Well, 2 CFR 200.512A guides when the single audit report package is due. It's the earlier of 30 days after receipt of the independent auditor's report. So your CPA firm that your agency would have hired will complete the independent auditor's report, sign off on it, and send it back to you. So you have 30 days from that date, or it might be the earlier of nine months from the end of the fiscal year. As we had mentioned earlier, about 90%, 95% of our agencies have a July 1st through June 30th fiscal year. So that end date would be so that nine months from that June 30th cutoff date would be March 31st, 2022, if we're taking the June 30th, 2021 fiscal year into account. Ah, we've reached our first quiz item. We want to make sure that you're getting as much information as possible from this training. And we'll have a poll put up here in a couple minutes to kind of test you and have you answer this question. And the quiz question is, is, what is the annual dollar threshold requirement for a single audit report? Is it A, greater or equal to $750,000 expended in federal and state funds? B, greater or equal to $750,000 in federal grants awarded? B, greater or equal to $750,000 of federal funds expended? Or D, greater than or equal to $500,000 of federal grants awarded. Sherry, if you can, uh, thank you. She already beat me to the game here. <clears throat> we have a poll up here. We're going to leave it up there for just a minute or two to have everybody answer question one. I have the results posted. Okay, here. I see the answers. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sherry. I've got the results posted for you. Oh, excellent. So it looks like most of the answers have trickled in here. And we're doing pretty good here. 79% of you had the answer correct. Yes, it is greater than equal to $750,000 of federal funds expended. So great job, everybody. Uh, thanks for paying attention and uh, following along with the the training. And I'm going to go ahead and take a moment here to review some of the questions on the Q&A chat box. And again, that's at the bottom of the screen, as Sherry had pointed to at the beginning of the presentation. And the first question is, good morning. What I would like to know 
is if CMAC projects that are causing the city to have a single audit, are the cost of the single audit be requested as part of the project costs reimbursements? That's a great question. Let me get back to you. We know that some of these questions, that this cost may be eligible for an indirect cost, but I will need to do some research to determine if that is eligible to add onto a uh, onto the, the CMAC project. So let me do some research and get back to you on that. We have a question here from Rebecca Nilon. Is an agency required to complete the SAR, but they do not charge staff time to federal funds? Instead, the funds are passed through to firms that are audited by Caltrans. Um, I can answer the first part of the question. So even if you don't charge staff time to federal funds, you are still eligible, you, you are still required rather, to submit a single audit report if your agency had expended $750,000 or more in total federal funds. So this is not inclusive if your charge did or did not um, charge staff time to the federal funds. Uh, again, it is, it, it is required if you had expended in total $750,000 or greater. So your second half of the question is set the funds are passed through the firms that are audited by Caltrans. Again, I'm not completely sure what the context is. If you could please email me um, after the, the presentation and maybe I can get a better idea of what, what you're asking for uh, with some additional clarification. Idri De Los Santos asks, is there an exemption letter template? While we don't have a template, it is very simple. All you have to do is just indicate why your agency is not subject in which fiscal year and have a financial officer sign. It might be as simple as just stating, our agency is exempt from the single audit report requirement for the fiscal year ending in 2021. Our agency did not expend greater than $750,000 in total federal funds and then have a somebody with a financial, obviously a financial or accounting background sign off on that so we know uh, who to contact uh, if we do have any questions, but that is likely all you need. So it's just two sentences on agency letterhead with an authority, you know, with an, uh, a signature of some authority. Is there a deadline slash due date that we can calendar of when this exemption letter needs to be received each year? So there is, there is no like exact due date of when the exemption letter is required. What we recommend is if when you're closing your books out, say in July, August, September, after your fiscal year ends, if it is June 30th, 2021, so take a look, talk to your finance department, talk to your accounting department, your administrative services division, and really determine and see if you did not qualify for that single audit report if your total federal expenditures did not meet or exceed that $750,000 threshold, and please send, send that letter into us. We'll be talking about some of the courtesy reminders that Caltrans does provide to our local agencies, and that will also prompt you to submit that exemption letter to not only Caltrans, but the state controller's office as well. So Amy Amiri asks, the, S, the single audit report would be for funds incurred during the fiscal year and not necessarily when the funds are reimbursed correct. That is exactly correct, Amy. It is based on the, the requirement is if your agency has expended the funds during the fiscal year, not necessarily be reimbursed for them, but expended them. Most, uh, most public agencies that I'm aware of are on a government form accrual. So that means if you're you know, if you're um, incurring the cost for when, you know, your your construction consultant contracts uh, have billed out between July 1st to June 30th, that is when those funds would be subject to potentially the single audit report requirement, not when you receive reimbursement. Say you draft an invoice to Caltrans, you know, two or three months after the uh, after you've been invoiced by your your construction firm or your consultant. So you're absolutely correct. It is when, <clears throat> excuse me, it is when those costs were incurred and not when they were reimbursed by the definition of expenditure. If we expend only one hundred thousand uh, dollars, Prashant D asks, if we expend only one hundred thousand, 
still we have to send the exemption letter. Um, yes, that is correct. We we do want to make sure that we track and we hold in, you know, that that we're able to provide perform provide and perform oversight of uh, all of our local agencies. So yes, we we do require an exemption letter just to notify us and say, hey, we we didn't spend a hundred thousand or more in total federal funds. And that, that would also kind of indicate and help us out to know that you may be a lower risk agency since you're not receiving as much in federal funds. Uh, you're quite welcome, Prashant. So that's the end of the QA questions. We'll have more at the end of the at the end of this webinar. And then we'll also open the floor up in case you know your your question may need a little more context or um, it, it may be a little lengthy and you want to ask it, so we'll also open up the phone lines after we get through the next Q&A session. So without further ado, I'm going to move on to the, uh, the next slide here. Let's talk, to, let's talk about something that affects all of us. Um, you know, all of our agencies are doing the best we can with the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And one of the nice things that the United States Office of Management and Budget has allowed is for the fiscal year ending not only in 2020, but in 2021, they're allowing, they're allowing agencies who have expended the $750,000 or more of total federal funds up to a six-month single audit report extension. And all agencies need to do is to complete this form. It's very simple and send it into Caltrans by February 28th. So that's next month, by the end of the month, February 28th, 2022, and send it to the Caltrans Federal Fund Award at dot.ca.gov inbox. The reason we're requesting this is because it, it talks to allowing the pass-through agency, which is Caltrans, we receive the majority of our funding from the Federal Highway Administration and the Federal um, Transit Administration. And once we receive it, we pass it through to our local agencies, our local public agencies and partners. And so it'll, and this, this uh, executive order from the U.S. Office of Management and Budget allows us to extend the single audit report requirement for an additional six months due to any pandemic related concerns such as securing a uh, independent CPA firm, um, you know, key office staff being unavailable, uh, any complications with some of the grants that came in, uh, accounting system issues that may need to be fixed in person. So there's a whole plethora of reasons that it may be delayed and it's just very, very mindful and thoughtful of the U.S. Office of Management and Budget to do that. And so, what you need to do on this form is just leave your contact information, the reason for delay. And again, we cannot extend it beyond September 30th, 2022. For those agencies, and again, it's 90 to 95% of them we're guesstimating here, that do have a fiscal year end date of June 30th, 2021. So again, it's so six months from the last due date, which would be March 31st, 2022. So six months beyond there is about September 30th, 2022. So let's walk through that form real quick. This is what the form looks like. I apologize. I don't know if everybody got a copy of this form. What we'll do is we'll send out uh, the form itself to all of the attendees after the, the training. And it's a real simple PDF. You just type in your agency name down here, and there's a sample up here to kind of see what the, the response, the sample response and a template looks like. Put your contact name, your phone. Of course, we have the popular 555 number on there. Put in the contact email so we know who to talk to if there's any questions or if you know, another potential agency, federal awarding agency or a pastor agency like Caltrans is giving you grief, we can share this document with them. And then also your reason for delay. We're not going to review this in depth. We just want to make sure that it's, it seems to be correct and makes sense of what the delay is. And we'll hold it in there, and the delay will the, the delay will be provided to you. And here we have June 30th, 2022. In the sample here, the, the agency doesn't need more than a couple months uh, extension here, three months to be exact. And therefore, they're not going to uh, 
require the full six-month delay. Let's talk about the main slide here. This is, I believe, slide nine. This is the slide that we all need to, to make sure that we're following. Uh, print it out, put it up on your refrigerator. If you've got kids, grandkids, put it down as their placemat, give them some crayons, some markers to color on. This is the one we really need to, to know and make sure that we, we have in place here so that everybody is compliant here and you know, no additional follow-up is needed by Caltrans or any other federal awarding agency, the SCO, et cetera. So where do you need to send the SAR package? And again, the SAR package needs to have the full single audit report and the financial statements included. The first place you're gonna send it off to is the Federal Audit Clearinghouse. They are the federal repository for the single audit report and the uh, financial statements. And oftentimes you'll see those financial statements come up in what most agencies term their consolidated annual financial reports. And you're gonna upload that to the Federal Audit Clearinghouse and I provided the upload website right here for you. And again, this is required in federal regulations. We're also gonna send a copy off to the state controller's office. Again, this regulation right here, section 20,020 of the state, administrative manu state administration manual, that basically requires them to be the repository for the state of California. That's their interpretation of it, ours as well. And uh, there's uh, directions here on how to submit and upload it. We understand that sometimes uh, staffing changes may have lost the pin and access information to upload it. The SEO does send out a pin every year and information to securely upload the PDF to their website. You may contact them at the single audits at seo.ca.gov and that, that website is located on the second or third slide of this presentation. And then you also need to send it to Caltrans. Again, Code of Federal Regulations require us to review the single audit report package as a pass-through agency to, to ensure that, hey, you know, your agency is eligible and we have, we feel very secure about you administering not only federal funds, but state funds that we, we hopefully and encourage you to, to go after and compete for and receive from uh, the state of California and also the, uh, the Federal Highway Administration and Federal Transit Administration. So we wanna make sure that everything is good and we also need to, you know, respond to management decisions if there are unresolved findings. And again, you may just send a copy of the PDF to the Caltrans Federal Fund Award at dot.ca.gov inbox. Another nice thing about that inbox too here is if you would please also update any fiscal contacts from your agency, you can send that to that inbox as well. We do send out some additional information such as uh, notifications of this presentation and others that we may have that would bear interest for anybody who is of a fiscal related background that does business with other governmental entities. So again, that's a good way to get notified about useful trainings. Hopefully you find this training useful and I'm just uh, not talking out of my ear. So that's great. We understand what the, the agency's role is in the, in the SAR process. You either need to file an exempt letter or send off the single audit report to the three entities. But how does Caltrans help our local agency stay in compliance and assist them? Well, we send out courtesy email reminders for the single audit report package and exemption letter. Each fall, we will send out a reminder. I know a lot of you have received that reminder and it just states to send the single audit report out or send out the exemption letter. If you do not qualify, do not expend greater or equal to $750,000 in uh, federal expenditures. And in late spring, what we'll do is we'll check the SCO's list. They have a list that basically states what agencies have are in compliance or are being reviewed for their single audit report or exemption letter. And those who have still not ex uh, have uh, submitted one and that they may be expecting either an exemption letter or single audit report. So we will, we will go ahead and contact those agencies and provide them a warning if it's not submitted, say, hey, you need to submit your single audit report package or exemption letter. We are still waiting for it. Records indicate you have not submitted it. So, what happens if an agency, and you know, again, after this presentation, we hope that all of you will be compliant. We don't need to perform some uh, extreme heavier follow-up with, with your agency. So what happens if agencies do not submit a single audit report package or the exemption letter? You may be sanctioned two to three months after the warning letter is sent. Again, we take 
as many measures as we can to get in contact with you. We also have contacts at many of the local agencies with your engineering staff. If we can't get a hold of you, we may send them a note and say, hey, you know, we're, we're expecting a single auto report exemption letter from your agency. Please have, you know, please contact your finance department, accounting department, ministry of services division, uh, county auditor's office, if that's how you're organized. And have them, <clears throat> have them submit the, the indication to us, please. Uh, again, we want to partner with you. It, it's much easier to, you know, assist you and be the good partner versus, uh, hey, you know what, we, we don't know if we can, you know, if, if we can be extremely, um, you know, relaxed and trust-free of giving you federal and state funding. So let's not let it get to that, to that context. And, you know, let's go ahead and be mindful and meet those, those deadlines. And so some of those sanctions include no future state and federal authorizations until the SAR package or exemption letter is received. <clears throat> so if you have an ongoing project, you can still expend those down in this scenario, but we will not authorize new state or federal authorization until we receive the single audit report package or exemption letter. So what we'll do is we'll just look over the contents of the single audit report package or the exemption letter. As long as it looks good, we'll go ahead and move forward and release you off of that list. And we have the last quiz of the day. And thank you everybody for staying on here and not letting me scare you off with all of our <laughs> requirements from our federal and state agencies. So an agency's fiscal year ends on June 30th, 2021. What is the last date an agency may request to extend submittal of their single audit report for the fiscal year ending 2021? Is it A, September 30th, 2023? B, June 30th, 2022. C, extensions are not permitted for the fiscal year ending 2021. Or D, September 30th, 2022. And Sherry has pulled up the poll for question two. And we'll give you a few minutes here to answer that quiz question. I have your results posted. Excellent. Thank you, Sherry. So we have about 65% of you with a correct answer. We'd like to, to see that number up a little bit higher, but that's okay. We've left you a copy of the presentation. The correct answer was letter D, September 30th, 2022. Give yourselves a pat on the back if that's what you had put in for the pop quiz. And the reason it's September 30th, 2022, again, remember is your fiscal year ends on June 30th, 2021. You have nine months to submit that single audit report or the, excuse me, the earlier of if you're, if you receive the independent auditor's report from your independent CPA firm, and that would put you at March, 2000, March 31, 2022. And then you're allowed that maximum of a six month extension to September 30th, 2022. So uh, great on everybody who got that answer correct. So this is the end of the presentation. I'm going to go ahead and take a peek here at the Q&A box. And then uh, I'm going to turn things over to, to Sherry to provide you instructions on how to uh, raise your hand and get unmuted here. But let's go through the Q&A first before we, we reach that stage. So thank you, everybody. Yaya, 
I just wanted to show my understanding regarding the due date. Let's say if my agency expended more than 750000 in federal funds for fiscal year 2020-21, ending June 30, 2021, then is the SAR due to SEO and Caltrans by March 31st, 2022? That's partially correct, yes. So it's the earlier of the 30 days after you've received it, received the, the full package from your independent CPA firm or by March 31st, 2022. And you also will need to upload it to the Federal Audit Clearinghouse. And again, that's on, I believe, slide nine. So great question. Thank you, Yayu. Uh, and then Yayu follows up and asks, you know, does it count on federal fiscal year end September 30, 2021? So if your federal fiscal year does end on September 30, 2021, which is actually the same as the federal fiscal year, then the, due, the last due date would be June 30th, 2022, which again is nine months, or the earlier of if you receive the independent auditor's report back from your independent CPA firm, you would need to submit that to the Federal Audit Clearinghouse, the State Controller's Office, and also the Caltrans Federal Fund Award Inbox uh, within 30 days of receiving that report. We have an anonymous attendee here as an RTPA that monitors subrecipients. Where can we download our subrecipient submitted res reports to review their findings? Great question. And uh, this is public information. So if your agency has, if an agency and, and one of your constituents being that you're a, an RTPA or is a regional transportation planning agency. So <clears throat> for those regions and, and that's excellent that you're monitoring your subrecipients like that. I, I can't thank you enough for, for assisting us with that. Where you can download it from is the Federal Audit Clearinghouse. There's actually a section there which will allow you to do a search for single audits. You type in the fiscal year ending. There's like a box. You check off that box. Type in the agency's name as T and go to state of California and click search. It'll prompt you with a, a warning about, you know, you're searching this and there's certain uh, dates and deadlines in there that it goes over. And then we'll pull up your single audit report. It'll pull up the single audit report of your search query. And then you may download it from there. So again, this is public information as you are using public funds or agencies who receive federal awards are using public funds. Sharon asks, if you receive an exemption letter and Caltrans's records determine a single audit report package is required, would, con would contact the agency when the letter was sent? So we do have a backup check where we do look at the federal funds that were reimbursed for the year, and we will talk to some of those agencies. Um, we understand that sometimes there is a bit of a pause or a delay between when the costs were incurred to when the invoice was submitted and we approved it for reimbursement. Um, so we, we would definitely recognize that and we would, um, you know, contact those agencies and say, Hey, um, you may not be, you may not be exempt. Here's what we have recorded as the revenues we have paid out towards your agency. You know, we can do a deeper look and look at the, 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 the time period when the costs were incurred. And we'll be following up and asking those questions. So uh, great question, Sharon. Thank you so much. Catherine asks, do we send an exemption letter to all three agencies, federal, SCO, and DOT? And great question, Catherine. Uh, it only needs to go to the SCO and DOT. The Federal Audit Clearinghouse only wants the single audit reports. The SCO wants to show all the, all the federal funds expended and awarded here in the state of California. And of course, the Department of Transportation wants to check and make sure that, you know, any of our funds that were passed through from the federal highway, federal transit, uh, federal um, <laughs> aviation administration, that those funds are included on there. And we want to, you know, make sure that your agency is able to continue to administer federal funds and not only federal funds, but state funds without much concern. And Catherine, do we have to apply for the extension? I'm sorry, I missed that. No problem. So yes, if you if you kind of realize, you know, hey, 
right now we haven't gotten our um, we haven't got we have a, an issue with our accounting system. We can't get hold of the single audit report. We've had key personnel uh, miss time due to the pandemic. Yes, please complete the extension and send that in so that we can review it and record it and know, hey, we don't need to follow up with this agency, um, you know, with a warning letter or anything of that nature, uh, because we are, we're already well aware that uh, their single audit report is delayed and they, they follow the proper pro protocol to receive an extension and submit it late. And, and all he asks, what is the, the deadline of the February 28, 2022 for? So that's the, the, the deadline for the February 28, 2022 is for the last date to, uh, to submit the single audit report extension. And the reason we asked for it then is, as I, as I had stated previously, the majority of our agencies, about 90 to 95% of them, have a, a fiscal year end of June 30th, and that'll push out their, their latest due date to March 31st, 2022. And what we do as a department is to ask for uh, the single audit report submitted. We, we asked the state controller's office for the audit report submitted by March 31st, 2000. We will ask on March 31st, 2022 to the state controller's office for all the audit reports that were submitted for a list. And we want to make sure that, you know, if you've asked for the extension, you're, if your name is on that list, we're not going to bug you with a warning letter that, hey, you've, you've asked for an extension. It looks good. <clears throat> We've reviewed it. And we know that, hey, we're going to give you some additional time to uh, submit the single audit report package. So that's what the uh, February 28, 2022 date deadline is for, is for the single audit report extension request. The anonymous attendee asks, does agency have to submit a single audit report or exemption even if there is no federal funds annually? That answer is yes. Uh, you will need to file the exemption if there is no federal funds annually. And that is just to let us know that, hey, you didn't have any federal funds this year. Who knows, maybe the next year you have a, a project that your agency might be saving up for to accumulate enough federal funds through your, you know, either your, your metropolitan planning organization, your regional transportation planning agency that they're accumulating for you, and you're going to be taking on that big project then. So that's we, why we want to make sure that, um, you know, it can vary from year to year. That's why the $750,000 annual requirement is in place because we understand some agencies will not have a consistent stream of funding from the, the federal government. So anonymous attendee asks, the extension is applicable only to Caltrans. Do you know if the federal, the federal and SEO filing provides an extension too? Um, so the SEO, it, it's kind of weird. The SEO is a repository for the state of California. They just want to make sure they've collected them and they'll let agencies such as Caltrans know, hey, you know, we haven't received X report that we may be ex expecting or an exemption letter. Um, you, it'll be in your interest to follow up and monitor these agencies. The extension itself says is, is applicable to federal awarding agencies and also to pass-through entities such as Caltrans. So it may vary from federal agency to federal agency, what their requirements and how they interpret that Caltrans has worked with divisional local assistance specifically has worked out a handshake agreement with the federal highway administration to state, okay, Hey, here's what we're going to do is we're going to send out an exempt. We're going to make a, we're going to send out an exemption letter. Um, if anybody wants to complete it and the agency wants to complete it, they can, and they can go ahead and submit it to us and we'll go ahead and honor that. Uh, according to the executive order and the instructions within there, literally. So to answer your question, the SEO does not, it's not really applicable to them. The federal awarding agency, uh, each federal awarding agency may have their own rules and regulations on how they interpret the Office of Management budget letter. Uh, and the Federal Audit Clearinghouse, again, is just a repository. They're not going to have any real um, say so uh, as they are not a federal awarding agency, but just a repository for the federal government. Let's go down to the, uh, the next anonymous attendee. I'm assuming that the ARPA funding that most agencies receive from the Fed for COVID relief is subject to SAR. 
Yes, it is a federal grant and funding received, even loans are applicable too. So if you've incurred costs on the loans or of the COVID relief uh, expenditures on those grants, yes, you will need those will those those expenditures will be subject to the SAR and your calculation to determine if you have expended greater or equal to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Margaret Fernandez writes, I have not received the courtesy reminder letter from the SEO for fiscal year ending 2020-21 with the username and password and instructions. Margaret, on page two of the presentation, you may email the state controller's office at singleaudits at sco.ca.gov, and uh, they can provide that PIN for you or provide you alternative instructions to submit the single audit report. We have one more <clears throat> question in the Q&A box. And then what we'll go ahead and do is uh, we'll open, since this is the end of the presentation, thank you everybody for, for attending. We'll go ahead and open the floor after I answer this question from Catherine. Is this a separate SAR? If we have separate ARPA funds expended versus other federal funds, or do we do two different single audits or one? Uh, I can't confirm it. Maybe somebody in the, the audience can confirm it and throw it into the chat box. I believe AR, ARPA funds have their own catalog of federal domestic assistance number, which would need to be inputted into the single audit report. So you'll just need to have one single audit report and include that information, um, which, which is included in the schedule of expenditure of federal awards. You'll need to identify the, the grant of the ARPA funds put in the appropriate CFDA number, and then the amount expended into the single audit report. <clears throat> All right, um, we're gonna open the, the floor here for, for questions. I'm gonna turn the, the floor over here to, to Sherry. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, if you have any questions you'd like to ask, um, go ahead and still use the Q&A box if you're comfortable doing that. If you'd like to ask your question verbally, please use the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. You'll find it a few over from the Q&A. And it looks like we do have one hand raised already, Anna. So I'll go ahead and unmute you. Go ahead, Anna. It looks like Anna's on mute. And if you go to the uh, the bottom left portion of the screen, there should be a, a mute with a telephone. And if you just uh, uncheck that, click that, left click that with your mouse, uh, you may be able to unmute yourself. We do have a question in the Q&A box, Daniel, if you'd like to take that while we're waiting for raised hands. Yes. Quite a few actually. Uh, just thank you, in. Dustin. <laughs> thank you, Dustin. Yeah, that's that's a great answer, yes. So the single audits apply to federal source grant funding. The additional funding this year due to COVID relief will likely put a number of smaller agencies into single audit requirements. That is correct. And I believe that is also part of the reason that the Office of Management and Budget has provided the delay, especially for some of those newer agencies who are not familiar with the single audit report process, um, to provide them some extra time to, to get their feet wet and kind of venture into constructing the financial statements and also the single audit report in connecting with a, a well-qualified independent CPA firm. And Dustin also continues, single audits also cover all federal source grant funding Major programs will be turned based on a couple of factors. Yep, that's correct as well.
to an anonymous attendee. For ARPA funding, we received a payroll tax credit that was applied towards our federal taxes. It wasn't a grant that had a CFDA number attached to it. How should we report this on the SAR? Ooh. Okay, that's an excellent question. Um, I have not ran across this yet. Let me uh, do some research on that and see if, when, and how that would need to be applied to the single audit report. And Henry Quintero asks, will the recording of the session be forwarded to us? Four questions trickle in. When sending an exempt letter, do we need to send separate letters for each grant? And that answer is nope. Just send one letter out to the SCO, singleaudits at sco.ca.gov and one letter to Caltrans at Caltrans Federal Fund Award at dot.ca.gov. So Lisa asks, you may have already covered this. However, can you confirm if both costs incurred and expended are included to determine the SAR requirement? Is the determination of the requirement solely based on processing through AP, which I assume is accounts payable? And uh, again, maybe I'm not, Maybe I was a little unclear. Um, I might not be talking the same dialect as everybody <laughs> else here attending the training. So when I say incurred, I really do mean expended, and that's that's up to the the, the definition of how your agency performs, classifies their expenditures. Meaning, I know we, we may have one or two nonprofits on there that may be eligible to use cash accrual. We may be able to have our cash cash basis. We may have a regular accrual. So once the costs are incurred, meaning the period worked, or once they're expended, so an expenditure accrual, again, the definition of expenditure should be the same as how your agency classifies its own expenditure methodology. And uh, the, the anonymous attendee also, you know, put in a, another follow-up on their each separate Caltrans grant. So no, we just we just need one overall stating that your your agency is exempt. And I've just posted my email information as well on here. If um, if you have any additional questions, uh, email is the best way to reach me. Thank you. We're going to go ahead. Oh, we've got Rebecca. Let me go ahead and give you the floor. All right, since it's a judgment-free zone, I will ask my question. <laughs> um, I work with really, really small agencies. I mean, less than 4,000 residents, uh, and they have very limited staff time. Uh, they don't have the resources to have robust accounting systems. So in years past, they've always avoided getting like a Caltrans audited overhead rate for their own staff so that they, they can be reimbursed on these federal contracts. All they do is hire consultant teams that go through the Caltrans um, uh, A&I review process and meet those requirements. So the agency is essentially just a pass through. Um, they get awarded the funds and then they charge uh, their consultant team's time. Um, and so I have one agency that's had over a million in the last two years, but to my knowledge, they haven't developed um, an audited uh report for their agency. Uh, what do I do to help them now get this SAR approved? I think that the first thing to do is to, <clears throat> you know, you know, ask them and ensure that they expended, you know, determine if they expended, first of all, a greater or equal to $750,000 over their fiscal year. Yeah, no, I know that they definitely did. They had a million dollars last year and over a million this year in two different grants that we we helped them get. Okay. So the next step would be to um, contact a CPA firm, an independent audit, you know, independent uh, CPA firm, mm -hmm. um, and have them work with the agency. And you know, if um, you know if they're, you know, have them have them also contact us too and let us know that, Hey, you know, we're, we're you know, a small agency. Um, 
this is the first time we're being made aware that we're subject to the single audit report requirement. Um, and we'll do our best to work with them if we can. I'm pretty sure their accounting system is not rigorous enough to meet the FAR requirements. What happens if they've been getting reimbursements without um, an adequately robust accounting system? I mean, moving forward, they could develop that or correct those, but they've got two years of expenditures with what I suspect is not a, an appropriate system. So what, what will end up happening is, you know, the the independent CPA or the independent auditor will go through and they may post that as a finding, and then it will be up to the agency to resolve it. The, the independent CPA firm will, you know, provide some sort of a um, a recommendation in there, and the agency will be required to put a response. And they can they can provide some feedback to to help walk them through the response. And then what will happen is the information will get relayed to Caltrans. We'll, we'll pick up the, the single audit report, review it, and um, perform what's called a management decision where we perform follow-up to ensure the agency is complying with it. And so we'll, we'll walk them through it, provide some corrective actions for them and let them, you know, let, let them, let them know what they need to do. And primarily, you know, pr primarily the, as, as far as I'm aware, I'm not too aware, you know, I'll, I'll just go very high level here for, for the rest of the audience. You know, we, we need to make sure that the, the, the accounting system can out, can aggregate, segregate, um, and accumulate the costs. Mm -hmm. Um, so there may be some, some systems that aren't too, too pricey, especially that are designed for smaller, you know, maybe a rural agency that might be appropriate for them too. And, we have connections here too, and partners that that we deal with who can, uh, you know, assist them in um, in finding and locating some of those resources too. So, you know, feel free to 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 help uh, to reach out to us, and we'll we'll see who we can pull in from our network uh, of partners to to help assist an agency get started and up on track, and um, you know, meet meet the known requirements for the FAR. Okay. Uh, are any of their previously reimbursed funds at, at risk because they couldn't meet that requirement? Um, it, it would only be if they if they cannot segregate them, and that's what the auditor determines that. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, you know, how, how would I put it? Like, um, you have like an office engineer or something like that, or maybe you know, office engineer, and they can't dictate which which project they're spending their time working on. Uh, or perhaps you have a a construction firm, the same construction firm working on multiple projects, and they're just billing all their costs in as one, and they're not segregating them out. That's going to be a very very high level cause of concern, mm -hmm. uh, and the independent auditor may question those costs. Um, but just because just because you don't have a you know modern up to date system does not mean that you cannot somehow you can you can even track it manually if you need to. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, you know, segregate out those costs by putting like a, a project identifier on there and, you know, recording your hours and then spitting that information back out, you know, onto an invoice. Okay. All right. Well, I think we will be reaching out to you for advice on moving forward here. Thank you. You're welcome, Rebecca. Thanks for the question. Good question. Okay, see so raise hand from Catherine. Catherine has her hand up. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we hear you. Okay, great. Um, I was just curious, this is also my first time dealing with the single audits and um, we're gonna have multiple things we have to report on this next year's. Um, and I, um, we haven't, um, engaged an audit firm yet? Is it standard to go with your normal audit firm or would we probably need to do an RFP for a whole new audit firm for this audit? Does anyone know? Where is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. I don't get into to that side of the, um, into that, yeah. that side of the house. Is there perhaps an agency who would like to volunteer and answer that that question in the chat box? Is I'm not 
you know, I'm not positive what the agency perspective is uh, from that. I can, I can only tell you, you know, the, the requirements from the state side of the house. I apologize. Great, thank you. And I, I do see in the, um, oh, this, oh, excellent. Thank you so much. So there's, there's a lot of answers in the chat box that are, are pointing to the, uh, oh, <laughs> you responded so great. Yeah, I'm learning here too, that's great. And Kim has also responded in the, um, the Q&A box here. It'd be better if we were using the same auditor as the SGR as part of the financial audit. So I assume that's talking to the, the consolidated annual financial reports. Um, if you have a, a CPA firm already brought on board for that, yeah, that, that does make sense. Okay, it looks like that might be it. I want to thank Daniel so much for his expertise uh, and sharing it with everybody today. And thank you all for joining us, spending part of your morning with us. Uh, we hope to see you again soon at another training. Thank you so much.